can you walk us through as you were writing this and getting ready to hit publish? Like, what were you feeling internally? A sense of nervousness that the world wasn't really paying attention to the reality that we were facing. Um, we have the benefit of being a global partnership. So we were seeing what was happening in China with our, with our business and with our partners and what it was like to be under a lockdown. We've been through many business cycles at Sequoia. We, you know, we've been around for 48 years. We've been through so many of these cycles and we've seen this movie before. And our sense was that um, people hadn't quite realized what was about to happen. It was like watching an accident happen in slow motion. You could just, you could just see it. And we felt a duty and obligation to do something about it. How did you think about, um, well, let's set the, the, the stage for folks. This was six days before the NBA announcement came out. So it was sort of a week before the, the general American consciousness woke up and said, oh my God, this is a huge deal. Did you worry at all that you were jumping the gun? And, and as a related question, I mean, Sequoia is such a force in our ecosystem. Did you think about the risk of, gosh, do we, do we incite something? By, by releasing something like this? We do, which is why we do this very infrequently. You know, the last, the last time we did something comparable was at the end of 2008 with the Rest in Peace Good Times uh, memo, which wasn't intended to be published. It was really intended just for our founders because we wanted them to understand what was happening. Um, and it comes at a risk. I mean, even there, I, I, I heard from people back in 2008 that, you know, we were the reason the crash happened. It's like, as if we had that kind of power. <laughs> And, and similarly, yeah, I, had, <laughs> yeah uh, I heard people complain, you know, uh, we're being alarmist and things like that. But we really felt a duty that, you know, m maybe people are going to um, be uncomfortable with us saying these sort of things. But we have an obligation to tell people what we see coming around the corner. Um, and and someone, someone challenged me and said, well, what if it doesn't turn out to be that, that bad? And I said, if that's the case, I'd be so thankful. I'd be so thankful and I will eat humble pie for having published this. It is so much more important for us to, to put the word of warning out. And I remember this, you know, um, often when you're in the trenches as a company, you know, you, you have a slightly different perspective on things, especially if you haven't been through previous cycles. And I remember when I was there at PayPal in, you know, I joined in March of 2000, the NASDAQ saw its slide in April. And I remember being at a board meeting with Mike Moritz from Sequoia in June. And he told us, he warned us, focus on runway because the financing environment has changed forever. And I think honestly, for, for all of us as you know, first timers, if you will, in the company, we didn't quite fathom that. We thought that you know, what we'd experienced for the last two years would continue. And he really rung the bell and we paid attention. And I mean, that month, we, we really started to sharpen our pencils to make sure that we had enough runway to make it to the other side. Is, uh, we were, I was gonna ask about this later, but, but let's just jump into it now. What, um, I'm super curious, you've, you've talked about this a bunch and, and obviously as CFO, you were right there at the helm doing this. What were the things you did? I mean, PayPal emerged from, you were, I believe, the first technology company to go public after the crash, then had this wonderful exit. How did you, like, what were the actual things that you did to, to save the company and to stay on a growth trajectory even through all this carnage? Well, first, it's obviously a team effort. Right? I mean, I, I was one of many people of the company that rallied together. And I think that's one of the things that you see in this unfortunate humanitarian crisis. I mean, I think the thing that's different about this, by the way, is it's a health crisis in addition to an economic crisis at a global scale. I mean, that makes it so different from any of these other incidents we've seen. And, you know, that's awful on many levels. But I do think it's, it's very different from what we had back then. But we rallied as a team. And we looked through the PL. I mean, I remember literally going through line by line on every single thing on which we were spending money to figure out what was truly essential to helping us build a successful business on the expense side, the things that you can control. We tried feverishly to, write, to raise more money to extend our runway. And we got religion about um, our business model. I mean, up until I think June 10 or June 20, 2000, PayPal didn't charge for its service. And at that point, we realized oh. if we wanted to keep going, we had to figure out a business model and make it, make it a great business model. And that's exactly the kind of focus that we got because this, the external environment changed so dramatically. But it, it's, you know, constraints enable you to come up with creative new solutions. And so I think you're going you're gonna to find an incredible array of entrepreneurs coming up with wonderful solutions in the midst of this terrible crisis.